guys. So today we're going to be looking at checking accounts and some different terms and things uh, that go along with working with checking accounts. So first we're going to start off by defining a bunch of terms. So um, actually with these I'm going to post a picture of my definitions of the terms. I'm going to po uh, either post a picture or upload a, um, a PDF of the term definitions, but I'm going to go ahead and kind of go through and read them real quick. So a checking account is just an account at a bank that allows a customer to deposit money, make withdrawals, and make transfers from uh, the funds or deposit money. So basically you can put money into a checking account and you can take money out. A check is just a written order that tells the bank to pay money from an account to the check holder, so to whoever cashes the check or uses the check electronic funds transfer is uh, or an EFT is the process of moving funds electronically from one account for on one bank to another account that could be in another bank um, the payee would be the receiver of the transferred funds and then the drawer is the person who actually sent the funds to the other person check clearing is the process that happens whenever a bank pays for a check out of the checking account so that's whenever um, the check actually clears, it's actually came out of the account. A deposit slip is a form to fill out when adding money to a bank account. An automa automated teller machine or an ATM uh, gives you 24 hour bank access to make deposit transfers and withdrawals. A pin number, or a pin, sorry, a personal identification number is a numerical password that allows access to an ATM. Direct deposit is, is a payroll or other types of checks that are directly and electronically deposited into a bank account. So like when you get paid for a job, a lot of the times a lot of people use direct deposit so that they don't have to get a paper check and have to go to the bank themselves. It just automatically gets deposited into your account. A hold is when the money in a bank account that's not, it's not released until the issuing bank of a check actually pays for the check. So if I give you a check, and my bank hasn't paid yet, it's on hold. Um, endorse is when you uh, actually sign the back of a check that you're going to cash. It's just endorsing the check. Canceled is a ch uh, canceled check is a check that has been processed so that the money is paid to the payee of the check. We have um, insufficient funds, which are when an, it, which happens whenever an account doesn't actually have the money to cover a check that's been issued against it. Okay, so whenever you try to buy something and you don't have the money in it to your checking account to pay for it. Overdraft protection is something you do want to have. It uh, is a protection that pays a check even if there's not enough funds in the account and there isn't a fee for the, uh, there is a fee for the service and the money that the, on the check that's paid, whether you have the money or not, has to be paid back still. Uh, interest is a percentage of the money that is in an account that a bank can pay sometimes on some accounts. So it'll give you a percentage um, of your money extra. Uh, basic checking accounts. So there's these are different checking accounts. So a basic checking account is the most widely used one. Uh, customers can move money in and out of the account by making deposits and writing checks to pay bills or accessing money. Um, many of these don't pay interest. There are interest-bearing checking accounts, which pay customers interest, usually on a monthly basis, okay, on the money that's in the account. So the amount you get an in interest is based on the amount of money you have in the account. Um, usually there's a minimum balance or else you get charged a fee if you go below it. Uh, free checking accounts, there's no minimum balance and no maintenance fees, and there is a law in most states saying that um, you have to be, um, this has to be available to you. Express checking accounts are accounts for people who want to avoid going to traditional banks like brick and mortar banks. Um, often it's accessed electronically on the computer or on a cell phone and uh, some actually charge a fee if you end up having to use bank personnel. So actually go having to use uh, like call in or for help or if you have to go to the bank for help. Uh, now accounts. Now stands for negotiable order of withdrawal. They're free and they have interest payments. Okay. 
So uh, they give you uh, interest based on how much money you have in your account, but you do not have to have pay a fee in order to have this account. A lifeline checking account is for low income consumers. Uh, fees and minimum balances are either low or they're non-existent. And then online checking accounts, they're completely online. They offer 24 hour access to funds and available, um, and you're uh, available to make payments quickly and securely at any point in time. Um, these are no longer different types of accounts necessarily, just more terms. So a single account is owned by one, in one individual. So like if you're single and you're an adult, you can have that account. And then a joint account is an account owned by more than one individual. So like married couples or um, dating, couple, dating couples oftentimes use this. Or if you have a, um, a small business or a band or something like that, and um, you could put everyone who's in charge uh, as an owner on the account, you could use a joint account for that. A check register is a record of all transactions in a checking account, including checks written, deposits made, fees paid, ATM withdrawals, just everything on there. Debits on an account are withdrawals and credits on the account are deposits. Now let's actually learn how to deposit money into a checking account and how to track the transactions in the account on a monthly basis. So example one, you currently have a balance of $2,300 in your checking account. You need to deposit a $425.33 paycheck, a $20 rebate check, and a personal check for $550 into your checking account. Okay, so you are depositing all of these things. You also need to receive $20 in cash to keep on hand. How much will you have in your account after the transaction? Okay, so first let's go ahead and total up the um so we'll go ahead and underline this is how much you have at the beginning and so the deposits are a total of 425.33 plus this 20 dollar rebate check plus the personal check of 550 dollars okay and so that's going to give us 995 dollars and 33 cents so that's deposit okay but then we're also going to take out $200 in cash. So we'll go ahead and subtract this $200 because that's a withdrawal. So W over D is usually how they write that, W slash D. Okay, and so that's going to be 795.33. So that's the total that you're depositing into the account. So the total deposit, okay. So then you take your original balance. So you have this 2300 from up here and then to that we're adding this 795.33 for the total deposit and if you add that together you're going to get $3,095.33 so that's what you're going to end up with so now we're going to fill out the example deposit slip okay so this uh, is again a piece of paper that you're going to fill out to give to the bank teller along with the endorsed checks that you've got and any cash you've got. So deposit slips uh, kind of can be different from bank to bank, but usually there's going to be a line for cash and then uh, multiple lines for individual checks that you're going to put into the account. And then there's going to be a um, line for cash received or what you're trying to withdraw. So here I went ahead and gave you a account number. So let's go and fill this out. So today the date is December 2nd, 2020. Okay, my name, you can write your name. My name is Kira Owsley. Okay, again, I've got the check account number 0123456789. Okay, so cash, um, we only mention depositing different checks. So we're going to leave the cash line blank because we're not depositing any cash. We have this $425.33 paycheck for this first check. Okay, so you put the dollar amount and the cent amount, a $20 rebate check, and then the personal check for $550. Okay, no cents. Then, so if we add these up to get the subtotal, if we add 425, 33 plus 20 plus 550, we're going to get that 
995.33 that we got right here, up here, okay? And then we're also going to take out $200. And so now we take this and we subtract this to get the 795.33, sorry. 795 on that line, 33 over in this box, because that's how much you're actually going to end up depositing. And you would just give this to the bank teller, and they would, um, along with the checks that you've signed the back of, and they would put it into your account. So, understanding check one. If Lizzie has a total of X dollars in her checking account, so we're starting with X, she makes a deposit. Okay, so this is the starting number. So this is the starting amount. She makes a deposit, so she's adding m money, okay, so of B dollars in cash, and two times C, okay, but again, it's still deposit, so we're adding it. And then she'd like to take D dollars, oops. She would like to take D dollars out. So this one we're going to be subtracting, okay? So um, she has enough to cover the cash received. So express her new account balance after the transaction, okay? So again, we started X with X, so we're gonna just take the first starting balance. We would add the deposits, so we have B dollars, so we start with that one check, okay? Or in cash, sorry. And then two checks worth C dollars. So we have plus C plus C or plus two C. Okay, because we're depositing that number, so it's added. But she's withdrawing D dollars, so you would subtract however much that is. And that's how you would do it. So you would take the starting amount, add all the deposits, so you'd start with the starting amount. You'd add the deposits, and you'd subtract the withdrawals. And that's always how it's gonna go. You take the starting amount, you add the deposits and you subtract the withdrawals. So example two, Nick has a checking account with the Park Slope Savings Bank. He writes both paper and electronic checks and he makes EFTs or electronic uh, fund transfers. So for each transaction, Nick enters the necessary information, check or confi confirmation number, the date, the type of transaction and the amount. So he uses E, so like for example over here, he used an E to indicate that it's an electronic transaction, okay? And so we're going to determine the balance in his account after the cable check is written. So at the very end here. So you can see that this is a payment. Anything in this column is going to be a payment. Anything in this column is going to be a deposit. So anything in this column is going to be subtracted because you're paying it to somebody else. You're taking it out of your account. Then you're depositing. So anything over here you're going to add. So this was the balance before this um, payment was made. So the first thing we have here is a payment made to an auto body car repair. So it looks like they spent $1,721 even, okay? It's in payment, so we're gonna take minus 1721.00, okay? And then we're going to go ahead and subtract that. We're going to type in a calculator, 3,672.27 minus 1721.00, okay? And that's going to give us a new balance of 1951.27, okay? Now we go to the next one. He bought strings from Kate's Guitar Hut, and so now they um, made a payment of 32.50. So we're, since it's a payment, we're gonna subtract, again, this 32.50, and then we're going to figure out the new balance. So we're gonna take this 1951.27, and we're going to subtract 32.50 from it. So you get 1918.77. Next, they deposited their paycheck, so they got paid. Since it's in this column, we're going to be adding it instead of subtracting. Since it is a deposit, we're adding money to the account. So you got $821.53. So we're gonna take this 1918.77, and we're gonna add this 821.53. And that's gonna give us $2,740.30. Okay, so that's their new bank account balance. 
Next, they had to pay Verizon Wireless. It was an electronic um, uh, payment. So over here, you can see he wrote down the check numbers for these because he paid with checks like that. And these ones are electronic. So he spent $101.50. So we will subtract $101.50 from their balance because they are spending the money. And so with that, they would get $2,638.80 after that. That's how much they have in their bank account. And then lastly, they paid the Star Cable Company online and they paid them $138.90 and we're subtracting it because again, they paid it, so they are taking it out of the account. So if we take this number right here, the $2,638.80, and we subtract the $138.90, we are going to get $2,499.90. And so that's going to be the balance in their account after they finished writing this check. So again, if it's in the payment part, you're going to subtract it from the amount in your account. If it's in the deposit column, you're going to add it to your account. So understanding check two, I want you to try this. So Nick writes a check to his friend James on May 11th for $150.32. What should he write in the check register? So this right here, the whole thing is the check register. That's what this is this whole thing is the check register what would he write and what should the new balance be okay so he writes a check so he would write the check number over here and just tell me what he would write out on here okay understanding check three would the final balance change if nick had paid the cable bill before the wireless bill i want you to look through this and think through this and explain why or why not it would be different so uh, that's the basics of a checking account. I hope this helped you understand this a little better. So now you can go work on the practice problems and make sure you fill out the rest of this and upload your work to Google Classroom. You guys have a great day.